for me behind the mask, I was willing to share and unfold what's really behind the mask of players. I really get my value from photography because I feel like I can put my hands on that situation, doctor it up a little bit. That's art. I want that image to tell a story to me. That's why I fell in love with it because I felt like I could capture a moment. Where we live in a place called Sandersville, Georgia. It's small country. <laughs> small. We don't even have a movie theater there now. Blue collar town. So it was imperative that you had to have a, have a work ethic. And that's what I had the opportunity to see. You know, my father, he, he worked in the minor. And my mother, she was an educator. So my mother and father, they, they were not passionate to, to go to work but they were passionate about being able to take care of us, reminding us that this is what I have to do so you can go out and play to run this football. That's, that was passion. So I got that passion. I was like, you know what? If that's what they got to do, this is what I got to do. It felt like home. It just felt right. You know when you just feel it and you just can't explain it? That's, that's what it felt like. <laughs> Running out the tunnel, I was like, man, heaven can't feel too much better than this right here. <laughs> Imagine if somebody puts a defibrillator on. Clear, boom. Takeo Spikes, the All-American linebacker, number 55, making that tackle. Over 80,000 people coming to just to watch you play. I'm gonna be entertaining. I'm gonna tear somebody's head off, but it's gonna be entertaining. Bigger, faster, stronger was the next challenge for me going into the NFL. People can say, what's your secret ingredient? It's the passion of the game, just the love I have for it. It's not so much making a perfect hit, but for me, I, I look deeper into it. I wanna see if I touch your soul. Because a lot of times guys quit when they get hit in the mouth. And so that's when I'm okay to pat myself on the back at the time. It's hard for people to take that jump over because a lot of people want to keep me boxed in as I remember Keo Spice as a great football player, and that's the only I don't want to talk about nothing else. That, that's what it's about, really just showing people different sides. You know, when I looked at images that my mother took, she was great at capturing the moment, but she was horrible at just showing it with clarity. I just get excited when I see somebody, like if I'm looking at you all, I just go to, you know, I don't try to focus, I just, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking the camera going to see what I see. He wasn't satisfied the way I took the picture. Either I done cut off somebody or either, I didn't take them right. They weren't focused. What happened was I took a camera. This is how you take a picture. Now you do it. I do it. You do it. And so before I knew it, and I went years without knowing this, probably until 2010 when I went to London to the International Series game. I was playing with the 49ers. We played against the Broncos. And I found out at that time that I really loved photography and I was exposed by the guys on the, when I walked on that plane, they were like, Spikes, you got a camera? You too big to be having a camera. You know, and, and so from that point, once I showed them the images that I took in London, before we landed, everybody on that plane was asking for images. So I played three more years after that, and it really evolved into a book when I knew it was my last year playing. And I said, I want to be able to share my story in a book because so many people come up and ask me why and the how. And so I was like, why not put other fellow linebackers in the book as well and have them to share their story because I hear so many stories that need to be shared and they need to be heard. But the images will drive the story and the stories will drive the images. The first was Willie Lanier. 
You could see he knew the craft. My background after I played was more business related, so we did it in a part of Atlanta, just sort of positioning it in a, I would say, maybe a Wall Street kind of way. I was impressed with it because no one previously had tried to mold the shot of who you really are, not the football person, but that person that you are versus the one who might define you based on the sport. Once I finished with him and then I had an opportunity to get feedback, I just went off faith and, I, and the best thing that you can do is when they ask you like, well, well, what is it? I had a couple of guys and I was like, oh yeah, uh, Mike Singletary, he just agreed to do it. Everybody always known Mike Singletary as nickname was the Samurai. He got that nickname because they said whenever he hit someone, he cuts them in half. And so as soon as I saw it, it was, Mike, we gotta take a picture with you and the Samurai Sword. To me, that's one of the, oh, the coldest images of all time. This really should be a front spread for you. Just letting you know that. I can see how he was a top football player because he's very dedicated. So after every shoot, he'd want to get together with me at my studio and let's review all the images, critique it. So I, I give him a lot of credit for that. Just to list a few names, some of the guys that I have in the book, Harry Carson, um, Derek Brooks, Kevin Green, can't forget about the Mad Stork, Ted Hendricks. I oh, want Bobby Bell, I think if I didn't say his name, Bobby Bell. He got some great guys in there, you know, some guys I looked up to, you know. He, he knocked it out of the park. What can you say? I looked at the book, in fact, I called him up and I said, I need some more books. Because people that I showed it to, her, everybody wants the book. Unbelievable, it's unreal. I couldn't, you know, I, I'm going like, wow, this is awesome. Chuck Bignaric. Now he was the last of the 60 Minute Men. The guys who actually played both ways. He was known for the big hit against Frank Gifford coming across the middle that put Frank Gifford out of football. And he stood up over him like this, the iconic pitcher. The family didn't allow him to talk to anybody in five years. And so for me to, for them to grant me access like that, I was like, like I, I, I'm gonna make this right. I really love this shot right here. You can see the highlights in his eyes. And everything that it portrays is exactly him with his personality. And I was very fortunate enough to get his interview and his photography session because he died, he passed last year. A lot of people come up to me all the time and say, Spikes, why are you not on the cover? And I can truthfully say this book never was about me. Uh, part of my story is in it, but it's really paying homage to the guys who really gave me the inspiration and motivation to go out and do and accomplish something that I wanted to do as a kid. Uh, so this was a way for me to pay tribute to him and his family. We're at the estate tonight. Uh, the estate is a historic home here in Buckhead. Tonight we're going to have about 250 uh, folks here to celebrate the launch of the book. It's your host, Takeo Spice. And look, we're here at the estate, Atlanta, Georgia, in Buckhead, celebrating the unveiling of Behind the Mask. He's been working on this project for over two years. And I told him, like, regardless of how good you think the book is, like, the victory is you, and you finishing it. And you're gonna take this book, and your next book will be even more phenomenal than this one is. Brother, you exceeded all expectations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm so happy about it because it started out just as an idea, just as a thought. But for me, what's even better? Everybody has that defining moment, 
And that's what these guys are coming to Atlanta to share. A little motivation, a little bit of inspiration. If you look at pictures which tell stories, those pictures live and those pictures give reference. That means that you are trying to look at the fullness of life other than just playing the game.